I did purposely wear green because St. Patrick's Day is coming. It's just a coincidence. But hey, it works. Hi everyone, it's Marianne and spring is coming. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you've been watching me for even just a little bit now, you know I had a hell of a winter, so I'm very excited for the spring and summer season. And I've moved to a new place in case you didn't know. And one of the best things about this place is having my own private fence in the backyard that I'm really excited to do something with gardening and with my house plants. I'm going to have a separate backyard gardening series after my moving vlog series is done. So do watch out for that. But today I want to kind of like give you a little bit of a preview of my plants for the spring and growing season. And as you have might notice, I have boxes here. So these are kind of like my gardening items that I'm gonna be using for that backyard series and gardening series that's upcoming for spring. My dog is drinking his water and he's being loud. And also the neighbors are doing construction on their deck, which is like right outside. So if you hear noises, I am sorry. So I wanna give you a little bit of preview in this video for my plants for the spring and growing season. And as you've seen, I have boxes in front of me that I wanna unbox with you, full disclosure, these are items sent to me by different companies for upcoming sponsored videos. So you definitely see me talk more in depth about this products. I'm not going to give you the sales pitch on them in this video, but I do want to unbox them and kind of like give you my first impression on all of these items. Do watch out for those upcoming videos. I'm really excited to be working with these companies for my backyard series and also on my Amazon storefront. So watch out for those. And as I unbox them, I wanna share with you kinda of like what are my spring and growing season plans and ideas and also share with you some plant updates. And let's start with the smallest box. I'm not exactly sure who is this from, but I think I know who it is from. But let's open it up and hopefully I am right. I'm just gonna bring the camera down a bit so you might not always see my face, but... Oh, they did send me a new one. Okay. So this one's the AHOP Germination Kit. I actually have another one from them already because I worked with them previously on an Amazon sponsored video. So I'm not gonna unbox it. Let me show you the one that I have. So this is what it looks like. It's a Germination Kit. You might have seen this in previous videos. It's like I said, I previously worked with them and I actually have been really been using this all throughout the winter season and growing my herbs and stuff like my basil. I had basil the entire growing season because of this germination kit and I really like it but when I was talking to them I told them just to send me the refill kit they don't have to send me a new one but they sent me the entire thing again even though I told them to just send me uh, the refill stuff but that's okay. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give this out to my local plant group since they have been amazing to me this past winter buying all of my plants so I'm just gonna see who wants it or if you're watching this you're from the DMV area if you want a germination kit let me know it's in perfectly working condition the only thing is it doesn't have the germination stuff because that's what I asked for them the refill but, but I still have the plastic one so you can definitely use it and just like use something else like maybe sphagnum moss or you could buy like this one from Amazon like you could buy this anywhere from Amazon it doesn't have to be from the same brand if you're watching this and you want this you can pick it up locally from me you can have it if not I'll be posting it in my local Facebook group see who wants a termination kit so I'll be doing an dedicated sponsored video but it's not going to come out maybe at least a month from now because we want to show a growth update so actually setting it up, trying to germinate the seed up until we get at least the first true leaf on the seed. So that's going to take about a month or so. So watch out for that video here on my YouTube channel. The second one is a garden bed from Vigo Garden. And they reached out to me wanting to work with me on a couple of their garden beds, the modular ones, just to show how they work and everything. So I'm excited because it came at such a perfect time with the backyard and I need like garden beds. I created a DIY garden bed in the old place, but obviously I couldn't take it here with me. So I'm really glad to have a new garden bed and a really well-made one and it's from a sustainable company. Again, I'll talk more about the company and the product when I show you my setup for the garden bed, but I am going to be assembling it in this video just to see 
how big it is. I have started working on the backyard since the winter weather has been warmer than normal, but it's also been kind of crazy. Like it'll be warm today and then very cold the next day and then warm and then very cold again. So, so I am trying to get a head start on the growing season, but at the same time, the weather needs to be a little bit more consistent. Okay, so this is what it looks like and you could like arrange it in like in different shapes and sizes as long as like you know the parts allow it so i'm going to be assembling this garden bed and like show you in the backyard where i plan to put it so let's go ahead and do that that's this teddy and he's going to help out today i guess so okay so for this garden bed it comes with four of these and then it comes with four of these. So these are the different ways that I could set it up. I can set it up just as a square with the rounded edge ones. I could do it as a six piece and have it just be like two feet by three and a half feet. I could do like a really large square with the sides. I think that's what I want to do. Oh baby, you want to play? Hold on sweetheart. Or I have it be like the longest setup, which is like two by five feet. I think I can do like the large square because that's kind of like what I envisioned for the backyard. Like when I opened the yard door, this is the first bed that I see. And this one's going to be like my tropical bed garden. So like when I first come in, that's my first view. Because my goal for the backyard is to give it like a Hawaiian vibe, like a tropical escape vibe. So that's that's kind of like I want to do. I think we're going to do the large square and see how it fits. I don't, the thing is that it might be too big for the area, but we will see. <laughs> my dog wants to play. Yes, wait Oh, baby, you might get her. Okay. Oh, don't knock the camera down. And I got the nuts and bolts. And I think that's it for the parts. I mean, I have assembled enough stuff at this point that this should be pretty easy for me. Hopefully. Do I have to remove the film? I don't understand why they have the film. Maybe I guess the Maybe I guess for it not to get stuck up, but... Okay, so I have to remove all the film on all of these panels. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'll be right back. But this is how it looks like without the film. So it just gets a little bit matted without the film. So I took out all the film and shaped it into the shape that I want. I have to like screw it all together, of course, but this is what it looks like. So. I'm excited for it. It's like big enough, but not that big that's going to be hard to fill up. So I'm excited. So yeah, so let's let me go ahead and hold it all together and see how it looks. So I was able to put it all together with the nuts and bolts. It's pretty easy. The hard part is was just like trying to tighten it up and I used this tool it came with it and you do have to secure it or else it's just gonna fall apart and then the last step is to put this lining on top so for like safety protection so that's what I'm gonna do now So that is the garden bed all set up. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. The hardest part was tightening the knots and bolts and the strip over there was pretty easy. It got hard when the panels overlap, but it was still pretty okay. I'm gonna put plants in it just to show you kind of like the vision for it. So yeah, let's do that. So, so obviously I don't have all my plants in here, so I'm just gonna use the plants that I currently have. But imagine, this Monstera Deliciosa and it's like spread all the way to the end. I will put my synapses, probably put like my other one. So yeah, imagine like, cause this one I'm going to separate and then plant directly into the soil and see how it looks like. And then over here, I would have like a bunch of my like smaller plants. Imagine this is like feeling that. I mean, not specifically this plant, but like something like it. But I actually don't have any other plans to fill it up with. I don't have my plans here yet. But that's kind of like the vision. So I'm going to fill it up with compost and soil and then plant this stuff. So I'm going to 
you will see in the upcoming video how I do it all. Yeah, so that is the Vigo Garden Modular Waste Garden Bed. And I really like this one. I can't wait for the other one. The other one's a little bit bigger, but it's like set up to be longer. So that's one's going to use for my like tomatoes, basils, lettuce at first um, during the cold weather and then transition it to the summer plants for the tomatoes and basils and all of that. And this one is going to be my tropical bed. <laughs> you saw me slip. Saw me slip. <laughs> no, you did not. But this is kind of where I want to put the garden bed. I don't know if I'm going to push it all the way there. We will see. Yeah, so basically, like this is the entrance of the yard. So when I go here, that's the first thing that I see and that's filled with tropical plants. And this one is the biggest and largest of the three packages. And I believe this one is the grow tent. And if you've seen any previews of mine, you know, it's not that I'm an anti-grow tent. I just think that they're not the most practical in a small apartment. But if you have space for it, it is a great thing to have. So I did purchase this, a company sent it to me. So if a company was willing to send it to me for free and do a sponsored video on it, why not? Because I get to try it out for myself and also get paid for it. I'm not gonna lie, but I don't know. Maybe after I test it out, I'll be a convert to grow tents. But like I said, my main opposition in grow tents in the past is because I have a small space, I don't have a space for it. Even now in my new place, even though I have like a bit more space to work with now, I still ask the company to send me their smallest grow tent because I don't know if it's something that I'm going to be using beyond winter time. But I'm actually very grateful to receive this at this time because I'm in the process of moving my plants. As you might see, I already have my Mascara Deliciosa here. And in the plant updates that I'm gonna share with you in a bit, I have moved some of my plants in here, but not all of my plants. And the rest of my plants are still in my old place. And those are the plants that I know are finicky and would probably not like it in here because it's a basement unit. I don't get a lot of bright light in here. I don't even get enough light for myself to be honest. So I'm trying to keep the plants there for as long as possible. Maybe up until the end of March, middle of April until like the weather is nice enough that I can put them outside in the backyard. But now that I have this grow tent and I'm going to be testing it out, I could maybe move the plants a little bit earlier and put them in the grow tent as they adjust to the new place. So hopefully that would work out well, but I guess we're gonna find out, won't we? So this is the next one that I'm gonna unbox and set up in today's video. But as mentioned, they're sponsoring a video of mine in Amazon, not in YouTube. So I think I'm still gonna share the updates of the grow tent in this video, definitely, especially when I do my house plant tour and my backyard series for spring. But you will get the full video of like the setup, my review, and like everything on it and my Amazon storefront. So And these are the instructions. It's pretty straightforward. I assemble the frame and then I insert the tent and then just add the other accessories. And it should be relatively quick, but let's go ahead and assemble it. So for the frame itself, this is number one that goes on top of the tent. Number two, which is the bottom of the tent. Number three, which is going to form the frame at the top and the bottom. So those three are the framing tubes. And we got four more tubes for the sidebar and two for the handlebars. I've finished the bottom of the frame. So it's important when you're connecting it that this part is all facing the same way. So you're gonna get it right. And then you can just like work your way up from there. Now I'm attaching the top frame. Make sure it's locking. There you go, that is the frame. And now we are assembling the tent on it. So just gonna fold it. To install the tent, first unzip everything. So this is where a second pair of pants will help you, but we will try to do it by ourselves. It's not that bad, it's pretty easy. You can do it by yourself. Thank you. 
So once the top part is done, we just do the rest. And then make sure you also put the base as well. So if you're assembling it by yourself, I think it's best to like lie it down so that you could get the bottom part much easier. See? So they said they were gonna send me the two by four by six. I think this is like smaller than I think what they plan on sending me. But that's okay, because I did ask for the smallest one, because I really don't have space for this. So, bring it up. So this is not even six feet tall, it's like five feet. I'm like five one. So this is the floor tray of the tent, and it has like Velcro that you could wrap around the frame so that it will stay in place. And that is the floor tray attached. And this is the inside of the grill tent. And not sure why they had this process the last part, but we're gonna put the sidebars and the handlebars to reinforce the frame. I feel like we should have put it before we put on the tent, but trust the process. And this last piece of bar, I'm gonna put it in here, but honestly, I feel like eventually I'm just gonna take it off because it's gonna get in the way of like moving plants in and out. I don't know. But we're gonna put it in there. I gotta be honest, I don't really know what the purpose of the handlebars is. I thought they were gonna crisscross on the top, but they don't. So, I mean, you can hang plants from there, I guess. I actually genuinely don't know where this goes. I thought it was supposed to go here, but it doesn't. I think it's supposed to hang in one of the bars, but here it is, here's the grow tent. First impression, it is easy to assemble, even some of the instructions were a little bit vague. I did ask them to send me the smallest one, but I expected to get the 2x4x6. This is definitely not 2x4x6, this is like about 5 feet in height, and I think the width is a square, it's probably like a foot, a foot and a half long on each side, so it is on the smaller side. I'd say this is like slightly bigger than the Ikea, the top cabinet, if you want something that's like the size of the Mills bow maybe swing for the next bigger size in this one because I know it comes in like three or four different sizes. But yeah, I would link it down below if you're interested in it. It just comes with a tent in the frame. It doesn't come with grow lights, exhaust fan or anything. I do have my own grow lights though, so I'm okay with that. It would be nice if it come with a little bit of shelving like for here, but I think that's something that I could create myself anyways in DIY. But we will see. And I don't want to do a plant chore vlog video yet up until I have all my plants in this apartment because I feel like it's kind of like unfair to my other plants that I'm doing a plant chore vlog without them here. I don't know. It feels like cheating. So I'm not going to share a full plant chore vlog here, but it's been working out so far like with a shower head, watering my plants. It's been great there. In the garden though, I'm still trying to figure out how to turn on the hose outside. I think it's turn on the main switch, but I don't want to like fiddle in the utility room and cause a flood. So I'm waiting for the maintenance guy to come in here and talk with the property manager. They're sending the maintenance guy to fix like a couple of issues in the apartment and in the yard. And I'm also gonna like ask them about the water source outside because I do need it when I start gardening. And for the plants, I repotted a couple of plants like the jade satin and the pink princess philodendron. So the pink princess philodendron, I think in a previous plant chore video, like the Valentine's Day plant chore video, I kind of like put top dressing on it to keep it from toppling over, but that still didn't work. It still keeps toppling over, so I decided to just repot it, and hopefully this time it will be better reinforced. I'm giving it a new cash bow, but I'm also still potting it up in a nursery pot that's kind of a little bit bigger for it. Putting some lacquer at the bottom to provide drainage and aeration for it and then potting it up and I'm using sphagnum moss mixed with perlite. And I use sphagnum moss and perlite because those are the two items that I had in hand. I didn't have potting soil plus because since the entire apartment is carpet in my old place I already really had a bad issue of like soil falling down on the carpet and I really hate it so I think to avoid that issue for any of the plants that I have mostly indoors, I'm converting them to sphagnum moss and add perlite or pomace or leca or whatever is needed to just make sure it's still properly aerated and have proper drainage. So that's what I did with the Pimpresus philodendron 
and I give it the cash flow that I got from Plant House Alexandria. So I think it looks pretty and I put some like white pebbles on top just to make the plant pop out a little bit and not get lost in all the, like the brown color. But I really like it. And the next one that I repotted was my Jade Satin. It was in a self-watering planter, but I took out the self-watering part. I put it in this pot that I had for a long time. I think I got it from Aldi, but I never really used it. So I decided to just pot up the Jade Satin in there directly since it does have a drainage hole and I kind of want to put it in my kitchenette area. So that's what I did. I repotted it, but kind of like the same concept as the Pink Princess Philodendron. I did put a lot of like lacca down below. Actually, I put a netting first on the drainage hole so that when I water it, it doesn't make a lot of mess. And then I put like lacca at the bottom to provide aeration. And then I still kept it in soil. Like I didn't mess with the roots or anything, but in, in filling it up, I just also just used sphagnum moss mixed with perlite. Just kind of like same idea. If it spills or when I water it, I don't want it making any mess with the soil. So that's what I did. And so far it's looking good. And there's parts that is bare leaves. So I'm trying to like propagate it through top layering. But I noticed that one of the vines has actually broken off, but it was trying to repair itself. But I don't know how long that would hold on. So I feel like eventually it would break off. So I'll see what's gonna go on with it. If it doesn't affect the rest of the vine and it still continue to like send nutrients down the vine, then I'm gonna keep it as is. If not, I might have to propagate that vine. And also to be quite honest, I have been suffering with mealybugs the entire winter season, which also kind of like is driving me nuts. And I really haven't solved it. It's just like jumping from one plant to the other. Like it would cure on one plant, but it would like jump on another plant. But the two plants that I'm still like having major issues with it is the Epipenum pinatum and the Shangri-La pothos, which is still back in the old place. So I don't know if I'm gonna have footage for it here. Those are heavily infested with mealy bugs and I've like tried everything. I've isolated them. I even took out the Epipenum pinatum aurea from the rest of the Epipenum pinatum albo. The Epipenum pinatum albo is now is like 95% mealy bug free. I would still see like one or two stranglers, but it wasn't as bad when the Epipenum pinatum aurea was with it. Same with my Manjula and Sabu Blue Pothos. So I think those are the two plants that I'm going to be bringing in last in here until they're cleared of mealy bugs because they are the worst infested. And then the Hoya fishtail also dealing with mealy bugs. I cut out like new growth that has any bugs in it but I did bring the Hoya fishtail here and hopefully that would work. I think the plants that I have in here is actually doing a lot better than the ones I have left in the old place because again, I'm not with there 24 seven to look after them. So they're kind of like struggling a bit, but the rest of them are actually fine. Like the Syndapsis Silver Hero and the Silver Lady that had uh, that had a mealybug infestation, they don't have it anymore. But when the last time that I was there, my five constellation Mastera was riddled with scales and mealybugs. And I know that is very alarming since I killed my Costa Farms Phycon and I'm desperate to not kill this one. And I was infested with mealybugs and scales. So the last time I was there, I made sure to like thoroughly clean the leaves of the Phycon, get rid of every single mealybug it has and scales it has. I did it like three times to make sure there's nothing on the leaves anymore and on the stems. So hopefully that would work out. I am expecting to see a bit more when I come back to it in a couple of days, but I'm hoping it's not as bad and it's properly dealt with. And again, now that I have the grow tent, I'm probably gonna bring the thigh cot in here and put it in the grow tent because I think also one of the big issues is having is not having the right temperature and the right level of humidity. But yeah, I think that's all the plant updates that I have for you. Sorry, I'm not actually showing a lot of it. I'm just like showing you B-roll clips because I kind of like want to save everything for the upcoming videos that I mentioned. But I hope you enjoyed kind of like the preview or the sneak peek of what is coming in spring when it comes to my plant journey, my gardening, and in this channel in general. So I'm really excited about that. But as you can see, I'm trying to film in like the one of the last empty walls in this apartment. So I don't kind of like give away anything that it's coming, um, trust me, the, the videos are coming. It's just a matter of me editing them. It's just a lot of footage that I have to like 
compiled together with the moving vlog, with the plans, with the backyard, with like the upcoming sponsored videos. But I promise you, they'll be good, they'll be fun, and I'm really excited to share them with you. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, do subscribe. I come up with videos every week. And if you haven't yet, go check out these videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you, I appreciate you, take care of yourself and each other, and have a plentiful day. Bye! Yesterday, there was sun in